This is part two of a two-part video where Rusty, a 20-year retiree in Thailand, uh, in part one he talked about why he still loves being retired in Thailand after 20 years. Now in uh, part one or part two, he'll talk about uh, his cost of living or being retired in Thailand, including his $200 a month apartment. Here we go. Oh, if you missed part one, just click the link in the notes below this YouTube video to see part one. So, Rusty, everyone's always curious. They hear about how cheap it is to live in Thailand. What, how much uh, is your rent and is it is it a typical rent or is it high or low? Uh... OK, I own one condominium. It is a 44 square meter condominium and it's where I live. I rent one uh, two floors above me. And it is a 66 square meter condominium, and I rent it from an American friend of mine, and I pay $200 a month for that. Wow. And it, he was renting it for $500 a month, but he couldn't keep anyone in it. So he asked me, will I take care of it for him? Oh, that's... You know, fix things, and, you know, and so I, yeah, I pay him 200 bucks a month. That's where my girlfriend lives. Okay. And so, and, and, and so is that a typical rent, would you say, or um, uh, is that a, you know, what, what would be a, if someone wanted to move over there and, and to Chiang Mai and live in a, a one bedroom apartment, what's a typical rent you would say they would pay? See, it depends on what you, what you get. If you get a basic apartment, a real budget thing, you can get a 40 square meter condominium for six or 6,500 baht a month, or that's about 200 or $210 a month. And if you want nice furniture and you want a modern air conditioner, I have a, a digital inverter air conditioner in my condo. It burns very little electricity. In the rental room upstairs, there are two old-fashioned air conditioners. They burn up. <laughs> you have to build a, a dam in order to keep them running. <laughs> I see. So I see. it depends what you get. And if you, if you get more, you will pay more. Up to, for a 44 square meter with more modern stuff, maybe $300 a month. Maybe $310 a month. Okay, so so what about what about a two hundred and fifty dollar apartment, um, just an average one? What do you what do you just a guesstimate? What would the electricity bill be? So somebody have an idea. Well, it, the best thing would be to tell you what my electricity bills are because I don't know other people's. Oh, good. In my, in my condo with a digital inverter, we only need to use the air conditioning for about six months out of the year. When we're using the air conditioning, the electric bill runs about 70 to $100 a month. Great, great. And, uh, and then in the off season, like now, my electricity bill runs about $20 a month. Okay, good. Uh, and uh, in the room upstairs, uh -huh. in the 66 square meter with the old air conditioners, if we were to run that all the time, you could easily spend three hundred dollars a month on on electric okay so we don't run them very often up there okay well fair enough so and then what is um what is your water and gas and internet stuff like that okay we don't have gas in this building and my water bill in my room is about five to seven dollars a month and the same in the room i rent upstairs and the internet, we have 4G private connections, one for each uh, condominium, and they run about 26 or $27 a month each. And they're very fast, and they're quite reliable. Great. And Rusty, um, do you, what, is, what do you think you spend on groceries? And do you cook at home mostly, or do you go out? And what do you spend in restaurants as compared to restaurants? Well, we, we don't live on a really tight budget, so we, we do what we want. And during the winter season, normally friends stop by a lot, so we would eat more. So I would say on average, we spend something like, uh, oh, probably 
$200 a month on restaurants and $200 a month on food, maybe $250 a month on groceries on average year round. That's great. And this means we're eating brie cheese and we're, 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 you know, we do what we want. We have ivory soap in the bathroom instead of the local soap made out of who knows what. Okay, great. Um, and um, do, what do you what do you think you spend on average on entertainment? Almost nothing because neither one of us drink. <laughs> okay, that's key. That's key. Okay. Um, and um, so, do you speak any Thai? Uh, I, you know, when I was working in India, I learned something. Learn to understand it, but never speak it. And then you'll know exactly what people think about you. Interesting. And I, I, I apply that almost everywhere I go. And here in Thailand, Thai is very difficult for me to learn. It's very difficult. And I have found something that is very interesting. If you only really speak English, you're speaking to the most interesting people in the whole country because they all speak English. All, all the most interesting people speak English. You go into a, a tiny shop or a tiny food stall somewhere. Yes, I can count to 10 and I can ask for food and stuff and I can do that easy. But other than that, I speak English and people love to practice their English. So it, it, to me, I do not speak Thai and I don't want to learn. And I know that may sound terrible to some people might say, well, he's just a horrible person. And maybe I am. But by gosh, the Thai people love it. They love to speak English. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, I appreciate that, um, Rusty. Um, and because Thai is difficult to learn and a lot of people are, are wondering, hey, uh, can I move there and, and have a life or do I need to learn Thai first? And you've lived there for 30 years, so that answers the question. So thank you for that. Um, so uh, your, um, um, what are your tips for someone thinking of living uh, this lifestyle? Or what, what would you do differently if maybe if you started over again today? Any thoughts on either of those questions? Yes, I would not buy, I would rent a home. I, I was injured up on the Kumbu Glacier and uh, injured my leg and that's caused me a lot of trouble since my first trip to Mount Everest in 1973. And I again was injured uh, in uh, all the late late 1990s again up in the up in the Himalayas. And so I decided to buy this condo in case my whole world fell apart, I would always have a place to live. When you become an owner in Thailand, you are faced with you are faced with getting to know this a side of the Thai people that you really don't need to know and don't want to know, because they they really are very xenophobic, and uh, they apply rules completely differently. In our building, there are COVID rules. The COVID rules are only enforced on foreigners. The Thais can do anything they want. And so if, if you, to me, I find this to be a, 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 like a, a replay of old Saturday Night Live. It, uh, it, it's, it's too funny to be true, but some people get really upset. So if you want to avoid that whole world, rent. Because when you rent, when something horrible happens, there is now a huge chicken farm outside my condo windows between two condo buildings. We have a hundred chickens out there, so I might as well be living in, a, in the countryside. When that sort of thing happens, when you rent, you can just go to the landlord and say, oh, oh, look how the time's flying, I've got to move. And you can just find another place. When you own, you've got to time the stock market, time the, time the money market, time the real estate market. Now is not a good time to sell a condo. Exactly. And you, and I, I've done a whole video on that and you just echoed the whole, almost everything I say in that video. So that's my same advice. So thanks for that too, Rusty. You're just, you're just uh, 
You're just a whole well, uh, a bucket I full of great that ideas. Video, Dan, I, and for, for your listeners to know, I've never met Dan. I, I, I found Dan because of that particular video. I said to myself, now here's a guy who really does travel and really does know what he's talking about, and he's giving his subscribers solid advice. If you want to, if you want to be able to make, remain happy and free of all these problems, rent, keep your money in your home country, invest it in things you understand, and when you pay the rent, the Thai person smiles and they oh look at that, he's giving me money, and when you own, they see you as a horrifying foreigner who who expects this and that and. You don't have to deal with that whole thing as a renter. The video you've been watching while Rusty and I talk about his 20-year retirement in Thailand is of Chung and I as we toured around Chiang Mai, Thailand. Uh, click the link in the notes below this YouTube video to see all the tours and food and everything we ate. There's a web page for you there with all that, that information. Thanks for watching. Oh, if you missed part one, just click the link in the notes below this YouTube video to see part one. Click the link in the notes below this YouTube video to get a copy of all the resources described in this video and a free copy of my ebook, How I Fired My Boss and Traveled the World. And while you're there, check out our 80 Retire Cheap Reports and the course that teaches you how to make money as you travel the world. This is Dan of Vagabond Awake. Please like this video, comment, or subscribe. Any of that would help our business. We'd sure appreciate it. Thanks so much.